Okay, good afternoon everyone. I'm Israeli government spokesman Elon Levy. This is day 111 of the October 7th war. IDF fatalities since the start of the October 7th massacre remain constant at 556 since our last update. An operational update, the IDF continues its targeted raids on terrorist sites in Khan Yunis and the central Gaza Strip. As part of its efforts to dismantle the Hamas terror state, troops destroyed a tunnel located only 1,500 meters from the border, a north-south tunnel that stretched for a kilometer inside the Gaza Strip, 20 meters underground. We repeat our calls for international condemnations of Hamas's human shield strategy and its despicable efforts to use civilian infrastructure above ground to shield its military infrastructure underground, deliberately placing civilians and their facilities in harm's way. Yesterday, the IDF declassified intelligence about coordination between Hamas's military wing and the Gazan education authorities, exposing how some Hamas terrorists are moonlighting as teachers. These were official letters addressed from the Izzedine al qassam brigades and personally delivered to the head of the Gaza Education Directorate, Dr. Mohammed Hamdan. Those letters requesting that the teachers be excused for military service with Hamas and specifically for military training only one week before the October 7th massacre. Those letters, of course, raising serious questions. We expect the international community to look into the original uh, copies available on the IDF's Twitter. A humanitarian update. Uh, we note British Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron's call for more crossing points to be open for longer for aid deliveries, including Kerem Shalom. In that context, we draw your attention to the fact that Kerem Shalom has excess capacity for aid deliveries if international actors send it. We also note that Kerem Shalom is currently closed on Saturdays because the United Nations has asked for it to be shut in order that it be able to process the pileup on the other side. Unfortunately, we still have an issue with the UN being unable to deliver aid as quickly as Israel is facilitating it and, of course, continuing its Omerta about Hamas hijacking aid. A comment on UNRWA's allegations of an Israeli strike on a UN shelter Wednesday. After an examination of the IDF's operational systems, the IDF has currently ruled out that this incident was the result of an aerial or artillery strike by the IDF. A thorough review of the operations of our forces in the vicinity is underway. The IDF is also investigating the possibility that the strike was caused by Hamas fire. As background, of course, we remind media of the consequences of false reporting around the Al Ahli Hospital uh, when it turned out that it was shrapnel from an Islamic Jihad uh, rocket uh, that had landed in the car park after headlines had gone around the world of a fake Israeli strike and we urge caution again before reporting allegations from Hamas or Hamas affiliated institutions as facts. Finally, yesterday in a speech marking the 75th anniversary of the Knesset, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reiterated that our goals for this war, which Hamas declared remain robust, to end Hamas's rule, to bring all the hostages home, and to ensure that Gaza never again constitute a threat to Israel. The Prime Minister added, and I quote, anyone who lifts a hand against us in Gaza, anyone who lifts a hand against us anywhere, will very quickly feel our power. There is not, nor will there be, any compromise with regard to safeguarding our existence and our future for generations to come. End quote. That brings us to the end of today's briefing, and we'll now take your questions in the chat box. Thank you. The first question comes from Melanie Lidman of AP. How are the protests impacting the entrance of aid into Gaza? How will this affect the number of trucks going into Gaza via Karen Shalom this week? And are there any actions being taken to try to make up for any deficits? The IDF and COGAT have said that this is a question for the PM. Uh, as far as we are aware, Karim Shalom retains excess capacity uh, for more aid to enter into the Gaza Strip. We've never placed any limitations on food, water, medical equipment or shelter equipment uh, into the Gaza Strip, uh, and that is Israel's policy. Question from Ruet Hoffer, Swiss Daily NZZ. Does Israel want to establish a permanent buffer zone in Gaza, one kilometre behind the border, to allow for the safe return of inhabitants of the south? Uh, the Prime Minister has been clear that our goals for this war are the destruction of Hamas's military and governing infrastructure, with all that entails, the return of the hostages, and ensuring that Gaza never again pose a threat to the people of Israel. We have been clear we do not intend for the, there to be any buffer zone in Israeli territory. This war will end when the residents of the kibbutzim that were ethnically cleansed on October 7th can sleep safely in their homes. 
homes, and for that we are pursuing the destruction of Hamas's military infrastructure inside the Gaza Strip and the creation of conditions that will ensure uh, that that cannot re-arise and pose a threat to the people of Israel. Leo Soroka from the Washington Post asks, can you relate to the different scenarios of the ICJ ruling tomorrow and how will Israel respond? Additionally, Dan Williams asks, does Israel intend to heed whatever decision the ICJ hands down tomorrow? Oh, we know that the ICJ is scheduled to uh, rule on its provisional measures tomorrow. We suggest let's wait and see what the ICJ has to say. We have expected, of course, to throw out the completely uh, absurd and ridiculous charges uh, pressed by South Africa. We'll remind you that while the United Nations says that in urban warfare around the globe, 90% of casualties are civilians, and we're talking about a civilian to combatant ratio of 9.9 .9 to 1. Uh, it is, of course, patently absurd to paint a conflict with a civilian to combatant ratio of around 1.5 to 1, uh, perhaps the lowest civilian to combatant ratio in any urban warfare in uh, history at all, as somehow evidence of a genocide, and we expect the ICJ to throw out these spurious and specious charges. The next question comes from Hannah Julian of the Jewish Press. UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez continues to insist that Israel accept a two-state solution and criticizes anyone who opposes this solution. Comment? The Prime Minister has already been clear where he stands on this, that uh, in as much as we are able to achieve a permanent resolution with our Palestinian neighbors, Israel will have to ensure security control west of the Jordan River in order to prevent the emergence of the sort of terrorist or military threat that might repeat another October 7th massacre. I will remind you, the West Bank, Judea and Samaria is a large mountain range that overlooks Tel Aviv, surrounds Jerusalem, leaves Israel only nine miles wide between uh, the Green Line and the sea, and only four miles from the top to bottom of Jerusalem. It is, of course, inconceivable uh, that anyone else might retain security control in that area and use it as a base for death squads to invade Israel, as they did on October 7th. And Israel has no intention of allowing what happened in Kfar Aza to repeat itself in Kfar Saba. The next question comes from Jody Cohen of WION. Does Israel have confidence in Qatar's role as a mediator to try and release the hostages? Um, Qatar maintains close contacts with the Hamas terrorist organization. Israel is therefore working with Qatar in its capacity as a mediator with Hamas. And we are, of course, fully aware of the incumbent complexities in that matter. A second question from Hannah Julian of the Jewish Press. The UN claims Israel is throwing up obstacles within the enclave and thus slowing delivery and distribution of the aid. Comment? We think that anyone who is truly concerned for the humanitarian situation in Gaza and fate of civilians should demand one thing, that Hamas should surrender. It should lay down its arms, it should hand over its war criminals, it should release the hostages, and it should surrender. That is what anyone who is concerned for civilians uh, should do, and we deplore the fact uh, that as UN agencies and international organizations go to extreme lengths to deny that Hamas is hijacking aid and waging war out of hospitals, they are deflecting blame onto Israel to cover up the fact that they have been covering up for Hamas. Ilan Ben Zion from AFP asks, the ICJ is expected to, live, to deliver a ruling in the case against Israel tomorrow. What are the possible scenarios Israel is preparing for? And Ilan, we've already addressed this question uh, from uh, your previous colleagues just a minute ago. Dr. Abby Korb asks, good, good afternoon, Elon. Is there any news with respect to the mediation delivery, the medication delivery ever reaching our hostages? Uh, the last statement that came out from the Prime Minister's office from the meeting with the French Armed Forces Minister uh, is having thanked the French President for his help in delivering those medications to Gaza. We are still waiting confirmation that those medicines have, of course, reached uh, their intended address. Uh, and when discussing the context of the health of the hostages who are still trapped in the Hamas terror dungeons, I'll refer you, of course, to the extensive medical report provided by the Hostage Family Forum stating that a third of the hostages have chronic health conditions. Others have serious injuries, gunshot wounds to the hands, the limbs blown off. They require urgent medical attention and we expect the whole world to put all pressure on Hamas to allow the Red Cross to see the hostages and all pressure on the Red Cross as well to pressure Hamas to see the hostages. There is more it can do and it is regrettable that the Red Cross admits that it cannot even be bothered to pressure Hamas to see the hostages. Dave Bender asks, where do talks stand on a diplomatic resolution with Hezbollah in Lebanon? What would constitute enough of an attack against Israeli civilian or IDF targets to force Israel into a major military response? Hezbollah decided on October 7th to join an unnecessary war on the side of Hamas and begin shelling and raining rockets on northern Israel. 
That shelling has led to the displacement of 80,000 Israelis who cannot return to their homes now that are being shelled. We warned Hezbollah repeatedly for three months to desist, that we do not want a war on two fronts, but we are willing to fight one if we have to, to defend our people. And we've been saying very consistently for weeks, there is still a window of opportunity for a diplomatic resolution to this crisis, for Hezbollah to back off from the Israeli border in accordance with UN Security Council Resolution 1701, which has been accepted by the government of Israel, the government of Lebanon, and the UN Secretary General. Uh, but Hezbollah must be aware, and its Iranian warlord patrons as well, in no uncertain terms, that we will not tolerate the ongoing displacement of Israelis from their homes and shelling and rockets on northern Israel. And if Hezbollah does not back off, we will be forced to push it away ourselves. Hannah Julian from the Jewish Press has a follow-up on that question. When might the diplomatic window close? What would prompt that? We're not going to speculate on the closing of the uh, diplomatic window other than to urge our international partners and allies to try to find a diplomatic resolution which we strongly prefer in order to avoid an entirely unnecessary war that unfortunately now Hezbollah and its Iranian warlord patrons seem hell-bent on dragging Lebanon into on the side of the Hamas terror monsters. Ilan Benzion from AFP asks, you said the non-combatant to combatant ratio in this war is about 1.5 to 1. Where are you getting that figure? Uh, Ilan, if you accept the Hamas figures, which we have reason to doubt, but let's say for the sake of argument we go along with the Hamas figures of 24,000 uh, and the IDF figures of at least 9,000 terrorists killed, and we humbly suggest if you're accepting Hamas figures, you have no reason to doubt the figures coming from the IDF, uh, then that ratio uh, comes to around uh, 1 to 1.5, which is of course a far cry from the global average of civilian casualties in war. All civilian casualties, we repeat, are a tragedy. Uh, every single civilian casualty is too much. And we repeat the uh, unavoidable tragedy that everyone who has been killed since October 7th would still be alive if Hamas had not declared war and chosen to wage war from under and behind civilian areas. And no one else needs to be hurt if Hamas lays down its arms and surrenders, as our allies have been calling for. Question from Hannah Lashinsky, All Israel News. Does Israel still intend to take over the Philadelphia route on the border with Egypt? Uh, Israel is in close contact with Egypt on various matters, including continuous contacts uh, for the release of the hostages. And we're determined, as we said, to create the conditions inside the Gaza Strip that will ensure that it can never again be used as a base for attacks against Israel, not like the death squads of October 7th, and not like preceding 20 years of rocket fire after persistent smuggling. Okay, that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much, everyone, and keep safe. Thank you.